But anyway, so let's have our toes forwards, feet tip width apart, <laughs> lift and separate the toes, pushing down through the big toe a little bit, trying not to curl and grip with the rest of the toes. There's an exercise that I teach when people have um, foot problems as physios and you try and push down with the, the tips of your toes a little bit and scoop up the arch because there are two arches in the foot. There's one that goes across and there's one that we recognise that's much more here, imagining this is my foot. So actually trying to create an arch through this part is quite an important back part. Um, so across the foot, so actually pushing down through your toes, the ends of your toes, and trying to scoop up where your toes join your foot, if you see what I mean, just trying to scoop up through there. Occasionally that can end up with a bit of cramp in the foot. Another thing you can do if, if you're finding that, that whole concept a little bit interesting, um, you can get a towel and you can try and, or a tissue, and you try and scoop and pick the tissue up with, with the foot, like that. Anyway, I just like to add a little bit of something along the way. <laughs> so, let's lift up both arches, the one across and the one along. Good, bend the knees just a little bit, scoop in that lower tummy and tuck your bottom under. Draw in, drop your shoulders, hands on your hips and taking the weights from foot to foot. And this gives you a chance to think about what I was just talking about around that foot. <sighs> Breathe, drop your shoulders, keep your chest open. Good. Thinking about squeezing one glute at a time. When I'm doing this exercise, I'm thinking about one part of me at a time. I kind of run through almost like a checklist. If anyone's done um, kind of mindfulness and things like that, you have this sort of checklist of how everything feels. So thinking about the feet, and how those arches are working, knees a little bit soft, bottom tucked under, thinking about is one glute switching on and then the other one. And as I'm sure I've said before, it's important that the other glute switches off. So can you get one to switch on and the other one to switch off? That's another thing. More important than you think. You can't walk around with everything tense. You have to be able to let one muscle work and then the other. Brilliant. Lift and drop through the shoulders. That might not be a relaxed movement to start with. Lift and push down and drop. Lift and drop. Not too aggressively to drop, <laughs> but there. Lovely. And then pushing forwards and back. Forwards and back. Good. Having the hands on the hips might help, but having your arms down by your sides might be a little bit more relaxed, perhaps. Good. And that should give you a little bit of an awareness of the shoulder blades, to be honest. As you bring the shoulders back, you should be able to think about those shoulder blades coming together. Excellent. Cross your hands across your chest, one hand on each shoulder rotating around and to the front again. Rotate to the other side and back to the front. Make sure your bottom's tucked under and your hips are pointing forwards. It's a real opportunity to isolate and just move through the upper back with these headlights on your hips pointing forward and keeping them forwards. Sometimes we do these kind of exercises with the legs out like that and that kind of fixes the hips. But actually being in this position and having to control and keep that bit pointing forwards is good. Good. Lovely. Okay, let's bring the arms out in front with the palms facing down. We're just going to do a sideways motion and then back to the front again. Side and to the front. Drop the shoulders down, scoop in your tummy, and try to push and stretch as wide a motion as you can. So your fingertips are pushing out, you're trying to reach as far as you can, but you're not trying to reach backwards. When you get to that part, you stop. You don't go back past there. 
Good. Let's have the palms facing towards each other next and continue. Keeping the weight back through your heels, bottom tucked under, a little bit of action going on through your lower tummy. Good. And now we're going to have the palms facing up and out. Suddenly that becomes obviously harder because we've been doing a few of them, <laughs> but also a little bit maybe stiffer, a little bit more tension through the arms. Two more. Good. And come back down, roll the shoulders a couple of times there just to release off any tension that might have built. And then just checking your feet again, making sure again they're pointing forwards, swing the arms up to the front as you sit back into your heels. So we squat and the table behind me. <laughs> Good. So you're sitting back into the heels. Um, keep the tummy drawn in as you come forward. One mistake is to sort of let the tummy come to towards your thighs. So making sure you keep pulling up and away with that. And think about the upward motion of the squat being the important bit. You're pushing yourself back upwards. Tensing your thighs, squeezing your thighs, drop your shoulders. <sighs> and breathe. Two more. Lovely. Stepping the legs out wide. Good, good. Let's, with the legs wide, you're going to have to see what kind of width you can deal with for this. But can we try and just pull up onto the toes? You're only going to come up about that far. It's quite a strong motion that you're having to do through your calves there. Keep your tummy tucked in. We often, or have at least done these a few times with the knees bent, but this is an interesting variation, drawing on some muscles, I'm sure you weren't sure whether you had or not. <laughs> good. It's very confusing for the body because it's not a normal movement. But I think it's good, um, it's something to be said for trying different movements that are not too familiar. Good. Lovely. Let's bend both knees and carry on. That feels a little bit more normal, doesn't it, I think. Four, let's try to do ten of these. Five, keep upright. Six, seven, keep pushing those knees out to the side. Good. Let's continue lifting one and then the other. A bit more relaxed, trying to control it around the foot and the ankle. It's quite easy on these ones to let go of all that nice poise of the foot but try and lift up and try and lift the heel and take the weight through the big toe. Nice, come back up again, turn those toes in, heels in and toes in so your hip width apart again there. Brilliant. All right, turning to the side and separating the feet again here. So we're going to come down with the heel, back up and then a little squat and up, okay? Down with the heel, up, down with the knee, and up. I'm purposefully doing these quite shallow today, partly because my knees have been hurting a little bit, but also I think if we're talking Pilates, we're all here to get control, not necessarily to build muscle bulk or, or pure strength. So I'm more interested in you keeping the control being able to do slightly higher numbers and of course protecting your knees, mine especially. <laughs> Good, so it's interesting doing higher numbers of these, I usually stick to around 10 um, but we're heading towards 20 now, let's just do a couple more. Last one. Lovely. So we can turn around to the other side, make sure you're high up on the toe to start with, everything's pointing forwards. Heel down, up, little bend, and up. Good. Everything pointing forwards, dropping your shoulders. Good. 
quite tiring doing higher numbers of these, but I want to say very beneficial too. Let's do two more. Brilliant. All right. So let's come to the end of the mat. Again, checking your feet, checking your posture before you start, standing up tall, tucking the bottom under, tuck through the chin, take a nice breath in through into the lungs here. Breathe out and come down at the same time, curling, curling, curling down, all the way down. Now, let your head relax, let your arms relax and take a moment to just feel, hopefully, that tension in the neck and the arms. If there was any, relax. <laughs> I don't know anyone without any tension in the neck or the arms. <laughs> Bend and straighten each knee. Now, I'm okay to have my fingertips on the floor here. Some of you might be even lower. But if you haven't, then just rest them maybe on your shins. And at worst, on your thighs. But I don't know whether anybody will be quite that tight. <laughs> good, good. Coming down to the floor. And coming down onto the elbows. Clasp your hands together. This is a great position to feel um, your tummy working nicely and as we need it to with those deep abdominals. I want you to stretch your right leg back and then we're bending and straightening the knee but differently this time we're tapping the back of the foot and the toes to the floor each time. Three, four, keep going. Seven, eight, Nine, ten. Bring that leg in. Stretch the other one out. Keeping the back of the foot on the floor each time. Tapping it down. It keeps the back straighter. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Bring that leg in, come back up onto your hands, and I would like us to do repetitive sideways um, glutes. So make sure you've got those arms in a good position, you're pushing up in a way, shoulders down away from your ears, and off we go on that one side. Two, three, four, five, eight, Nine, ten, good, other side, two, three, four, you're keeping those hips level, try not to twist them round. Nine, ten, good, sit back into your heels and breathe. Keep trying to keep the hands where they are and actually try and push away through your fingertips. That definitely gives you a more active stretch. Let's walk the hands over to the left and grasp your left hand with your right. And if you pull and sink your hips back in the other direction, in the opposite direction, you'll get a little stretch down through the outer right hand side of the body a bit. Not a very satisfying stretch, this one. <laughs> Other side, grasp and sink your way to the side. Good, good, good. Okay, coming back up. Let's scoop in and curl up with the back. And then down, trying to get as much movement through that pelvis as we can. Pelvic tilts are one of the most important things to keep mobile for the health of your back. Great. Two 
table. Good. Brilliant. Coming around and sitting. Cool. Arms out. Curl back and pull up. Scoop in, curl back and come up. Good. So again, these pelvic tilts, what we've just done there is moved the pelvis and make sure we've got the movement in a more relaxed manner when we're on hands and knees. And then this is when we're actually using it with the muscles a little bit more. Keep yourself upright with your chin tucked. All of this time during Pilates, it's good to have the neck lengthened up at the back and your chin tucked. Good. Always breathing. Good. Last one. Brilliant. Legs out straight. Coming forwards, pointing the toes a little bit. Good. I'm whizzing through all of these initial exercises because I want to do as much as we can in the more traditional manner today on our backs. So if we lie down now, feet hip width apart, toes pointing forwards. And I'd like to do that routine where we run through each exercise from level one to level five. So we have our scissors first. Tuck the chin, open out the chest, ribs down, find that arch in the back. Fingertips on the front of your hips because that tells you a lot about whether you're managing to do the exercise well or not. Tighten through your pelvic floor and then lift and lower each leg. Remembering that that pelvic floor links to your deep abdominals and when they're working, your spine is looked after and stable. Just please keep remembering that the leg on the floor, when the foot goes down to the floor, that's the leg working and stabilizing you. Great. Bring your right leg up, draw in, try to get it from as low down as you can, pick up the left, right down, left down, continue. Good. Make sure your breath is going into the lower outer lungs here. Your lungs are expanding outwards. Your ribs are like bucket handles. They scoop and they go outwards like that. So as you're breathing, you're wanting them to expand like that, rather than the breathing through into the tummy, which is when your diaphragm pushes downwards. That then interrupts with everything you're trying to achieve down here. Swap legs, other leg first. Hands across your tummy on this exercise is quite good to make sure that you're not pushing outwards. Similar mechanism to what we were just talking about with the diaphragm pushing down. It's another way that we try to create stability. Good. Good, last one. Excellent. This is where it gets hard, especially on this exercise, to give your legs a little shake. We're going to bring both legs up to tabletop. Keep your ribs down, scoop in your tummy, keep your toes down. You saw my adjustment there. Tap one toe down at a time. Tap and lift, tap and lift. Scooping in through that lower tummy. Make sure you correct the rest of your posture by tucking your chin, keeping your chest open. Breathing. Good. Make sure you're not tapping too close towards your body. Try to push yourself and tap towards the end of the mat a little bit. Having said that, if you know you struggle with this exercise, the best way of doing it is to close in a little bit more like that. 
So as long as you know that you can push yourself, do so. Four more. Four and come back down. And then skipping to level five, because level four is just doing that a little bit faster. What we're doing, this is where it does become um, like a pair of scissors. <laughs> Bring both legs up, hold on behind your left and straighten both out. And this gives you a little bit of relief around your quads, which will be burning a little bit. So keep going with that, straighten up. It's like you're doing a hamstring stretch, but stretching the other leg out at the same time. This series works is you get really tired from doing one exercise up to the higher level and then you start from the beginning again with the next one which is quite nice. Ribs down, chin tucked, taking one knee sideways and come back up, other knee sideways and back up. Good. You're aiming to keep your hips pointing straight upwards. Keep breathing. <sighs> Tucking the chin, chest open, ribs down, tighten through that pelvic floor. Good, lowering the knee out and then controlling back up. Good, now knees and toes together. Taking the legs over to the side, pick up the right foot and roll back in. Pick up the left and roll back in. Ribs are down, lower tummy scoots in. Good, thinking about pulling yourself back. Open out and come over to the side, but then pull yourself back. Pull the foot and the hip down to the floor. Work out what you need to use to do that. Breathing nice and relaxed. Two more. Brilliant. Just separate out your feet just a little bit. Have a nice breath and then come up to tabletop. Let's bring the knees and toes back together again and take one knee out to the side, pinning the toes together. One knee out to the side at a time. Staying strong through the rest of the body, ribs are down, little arch in the back. Good. And then we have to move on, separate your feet out like that. So we're taking the whole leg out to the side, not pinning the toes together. Again, breathing. Good, one more each side. I think let's just stay up here. If you're struggling, come down with your toes onto the floor. But if you're doing all right, start rolling over from side to side. Good. So you do have the option of putting those toes back down to the floor there. And you're better off doing that. If you do feel like you're struggling, you're definitely better off coming down and doing um, the level below. And concentrating on it, you'll get much more out of it. Good. One more each side. Nice, and pull your knees into your chest. Great, all right, I'm gonna make sure I've got enough mat here because it's nice not to come off the end of the mat when you stretch the leg out. Um, otherwise it rucks up as you're trying to pull the leg back in again. So get your head right up to one end, ribs down, chin tucked, find the arch in your back, tighten your tummy, push away with the heel, 
and then once at the end, pull your heel up off the floor, not the rest of the leg, the calf is definitely still down there, and then pull back in, lead it with the toes. Push away with the heel, and come back in with the toes. Push away, and draw back in. It's not very intense around the middle here. Okay, now we come up to tabletop with the right, push out and away, back in and down, and then the other leg, up, out, in, down. And you should be able to tense your thigh, squeeze your thigh as you stretch away. Good. Good work, make sure Constantly thinking about the rest of your posture from the top down. Especially if you start feeling it's a bit repetitive and boring. <laughs> Good to start focusing back in again on the positions. <sighs> Lovely. I've got to bring both legs up to tabletop again. Squeeze in. Stretch away and in. Stretch out and in. Good, be careful not to drop that heel too far. Hit that tabletop position each time, pull back to where it should be. And in fact, I think that's probably part of what the arms are all about when, when we do it, when we do the next one. Make sure that your tummy's not gradually pushing, pushing, pushing outwards. That means that you're struggling with the exercise. So if that is happening, um, then it might be best to come down and do the previous level. Three, two, one, nice, come down. <sighs> Just get some air into your lungs. And then as promised, we're gonna add those arms in. And like I say, I think that is all about checking that that leg is in line. I've never really understood these arms before, but now thinking about it, I think that's about checking that the leg is where it should be. So bring the legs up to tabletop, crunch, do your arm check, stretch the other one out, and then keep going. Make sure your breathing is nice and relaxed. Try not to make your legs do a cycling kind of thing like that, <laughs> if you can. It's actually quite a jerky movement, push out and in. Three, two, one. Oh, and come back down. They're quite exhausting doing those um, <laughs> in that way. It makes them much, much more tiring. So give those legs a shake, and now is an opportunity to do some shoulder bridges. So bring your heels close to your bum, not too far, don't force them. Turkey under, curling up, push your knees away. Curl back down, ribs, ribs, ribs first, and curl down. Lower back pushes into the floor and then lifts up and away as you fit back into that posture. Tuck under, curl up. Push your knees away, breathe in maybe at the top, and curl down. Good. Curl up, knees away. Curl down. Great. Go again, curl up, knees away, come down, keep going, pushing away, back down, last one. Brilliant. I'd like to see some crunches, of course. <laughs> hands behind your head, keep that little arch in the back as we crunch, we draw in. But how are we going to make these different today? I know, let's bring the soles of the feet together and the knees drop to the side. Crunch and down with that. Good, drawing in the tummy. This takes the hip flexors out of it and we've used the hip flexors quite a lot on those hard exercises that we've done. Ten. 
11, 12, let's do 15, 13, 14, 15. Staying with the crunches, bring the legs back to tabletop again. I would like you to straighten up one leg like this. Now, now people may not be able to do that. If you're struggling up there, um, I want you to come down to tabletop. But if you can, I want you to pull up and touch as far down that leg as you can. Good. <laughs> Four, five, six. That hand comes behind your head each time. Lovely. Bring that leg down, have a brief rest and stretch the other leg up. If you're here, I'm thinking it might be good to just sort of rotate through the elbows. You've got the knee bent there. Off we go on the other side. One, two, three. Four, try and keep that knee straight. Seven, nine, ten. Brilliant, those abs will be tired today. There'll be a few of you aching tomorrow. I'd imagine that's quite intense. So let's turn onto our sides. Nice and flat with the arm out straight. Tuck the bottom hip back. Tuck those ribs back. <laughs> There's a lot of the side of your body down on the mat there, but just making sure that you've got it in the right position. Everything scoots slightly backwards, so the top half wants to roll forwards like that. And then lifting your top knee. Good, when you're lifting that knee, making sure the top hip doesn't rock backwards. If you've got your bottom hip tucked, tucked underneath you far enough, then it's actually quite difficult to rock back like that. But in order to stop yourself rocking back, try and keep some tension through the body, especially through your abs here, holding this bit well. And instead of trying to keep that little arch in the back, as we often do, um, in this position, we want to actually scoop and tuck under a little bit there. Brilliant, feet up. Go again. Making sure you're getting some nice deep breaths in every now and again. You don't want to be consistently deep breathing. <laughs> That's not good for you, but especially when you start to feel a bit tired, have a nice inhale through the nose, out through the mouth, and that usually gives you that little extra boost. Bottom leg down, top leg forwards and backwards like that. Don't quite know what I'm going to hit behind me. Good. Great. Stretch that leg out. Squeeze the glue nice and straight with the leg and pulse up and down. Good. Now can we rotate the toes up and down, rotate up and down. Again, taking those nice deep breaths when it starts to feel a bit too tiring. Good. And now I want big up and down. These are always very hard once you've done the others. Let's just do five, two, three, four, five. Oh, and stop there. Brilliant. Coming over to the other side. We've got some hip back, ribs back, scooping and tucking under. Good. Have that arm out straight and lift that top knee. Always need a few extra shuffles if that reassures you at all. I always feel like I need to shuffle again to find that position properly. Let's have feet up and go again. Good. 
Good, bottom leg down, top leg forwards and backwards. This is the one you have to really look after that middle section of you. Two. Try and keep it straight and strong as the leg wants to tip you forwards and backwards. Great, stretch that leg out, squeeze your glutes, try and line everything before you start, but then pulse up and down. Great, now rotate it up and down with that leg. Oh, it feels stiff and tight, but that's actually partly because it feels tired. <laughs> Good, nicely up and down. One, two, three, four. Whoa, well done, brilliant. Coming up and crossing the legs. Great. Just easing side to side like that. Feeling your glutes stretch or kind of in general all up and around there. Lovely, swing that left leg round to the side. <sighs> Pull up tall and try and get that left hip down to the floor a little bit. And then coming over to the right, bending the elbow, allowing that elbow to come down to the floor each time. Good, but trying to keep this hip down. It won't be flat on the floor, this hip, so don't be, you know, don't be fooled to think that that hip can be all the way down. It just stays put. It doesn't lift any further when you come over to the side. Good. Two more. Brilliant. And round to the other side. Pulling up tall, trying to push this hip down and then coming over. One. Oh, good. Pushing down into that elbow. Brilliant. Um, and then let's come onto one knee and one foot. Good, scooping and tucking under, lunging forwards. Everything tall, drop the shoulders, scooping, tucking under. Breathe in and out, lunging into it. Stretch both arms up. So you're really stretching through the body. Great, and then swap. It was a bit. Bit of a balance issue there. <laughs> um, first of all, hands on hips, tucking under, lunging into it. And then stretching up with the arms. Just intensifies the stretch a little bit. Good. Coming back down onto our fronts, and I want to bend one knee there to stretch the quad. We've used our quads quite a lot with those abs exercises, so it's good to stretch those off. Good, and swap sides. Brilliant. Um, coming up onto hands and knees. Good. Stretching the bottom up. But push one heel down. We're staying on one side there to get a, a deep stretch through one calf. You'll feel it up through the back of the leg as well, into the, the back of the leg and the hamstring too. 
and then pushing the other heel down. Good, good. Walking backwards with your hands to your feet. Hang there, drop your chin. Curl your way up. And then stretch one heel forwards and have your hands rested on the other thigh to get the hamstring. And then the other side, put the other heel forward, stretch your bottom backwards. <sighs> Breathe. Good. And then come in with the legs wide here and come down onto the thighs with the elbows and push your knees outwards, getting that inner thigh stretch. And then come up tall, bring the legs in, little roll of the shoulders, and well done. Another session done. <laughs> Good work, everyone.